Hello. Hello. And once again, thank you for watching. My name is Hobo Tom, and this is the Hobo and His Girlfriend Wrestling Podcast. And I'm here to talk a little bit about Raw. I'd like to thank everyone for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe. And I think there's going to be a little bonus section on Wednesday because I'm finally been allowed to live stream. Yes. I'm going to try and live stream my reactions and commentaries only. I learned my lesson. From, or about Extreme Rules, which is on Sunday. I think the pre-show starts at 6. The show goes from like 7 to 11. It's like 9 matches, I think, on it. It's going to be long. I don't know what's going to be on the pre-show. What, what is it? But we'll get to that later in the week. I just talked to time to talk about Raw. I'm kind of busy this weekend, so I'm going to make this eh, as quick as I can. About a good 20 minutes. So let's start off with Roman Reigns getting booed. And the only time the crowd cheered for him is when there was a brawl because he called out Bobby Lashley. Do not, people. Again, Kurt Angle intervenes. The crowd just starts to chant, let them go. And then once they start brawling, they just, the crowd cheers. Then you have the backstage just kind of empty out. I swore I saw Mike Bennett there and Kurt Hawkins. Yeah, whenever Lashley would go after Romans, the crowd just really cheered. I mean, there were yes chants when they were fighting. It was good. I mean, it was, it was, a, it was a fun brawl. One of, the, one of the most entertaining segments with Roman Reigns in a while. Not cutting his message because trust me, Roman Reigns is a great wrestler. A very good in, in ring person, but when it comes to doing the promos and stuff, it, it's, it's really an A or an F. And most of the time, it's an F. Unless he tells you to, whoa, put that beef away. Best ever. And then with this, I mean, Roman Reigns pulled out some moves. I mean, he took out everyone from a over-the-top rope suicide splash. I mean, it was just fun, though. I mean, it was good. And, you see, and, and then it cuts to Alexa Bliss and the, <laughs> watching the monitor. She looks absolutely terrified. She's like... And again, it's just... And this leads to the Nia Jax... And Natalia versus Alexa Bliss and Mickey James match kind of to start off right after after a really good twenty minute brawl. And it, it, again, it was a brawl. The go home shows are weird. They're very promo heavy. Not a lot of action. But again, for this match, again, we're going to talk a little bit about the math this episode. See what happens. But it was it was a it was a, it was a good match. I mean, they tried to. Nia Jax and Natalia tried to like copy the Heart Foundation. They tried to do a heart line. And they kind of missed on that though. They kind of whiffed on that. Um and then probably a tribute to her father and her uncle. Father being Nightheart, James Nightheart. And of course Brett Brett Hart. Uncle. And again, it was a lot of action with Naya, and then eventually the crowd said, "We want, we want Naya." And Jax gets a hot tag. I mean, Naya Jax really presses Mickey James. Alexa Bliss busts out the kendo stick, starts to whoop Naya with the kendo stick, and it's it's gonna be interesting. Will this match overall. And the ham sandwich. Cheers. Again, nothing wrong with the ham sandwich. Nothing special, though. A lot of the stuff were ham sandwich. You're going to see a lot of ham sandwiches tonight, folks. But it is what it was. I have a feeling Alexa's going to lose. Because she stood strong, whooping Nia Jax. Then Jax did stand tall at the end by taking and breaking the kendo stick. 
I'll have to ponder that later. Yeah, my predictions will be later. My girlfriend will be on the cell phone later. That's well making projections. Please to the second match. Mojo Rally versus Noe Jose. Right after a Kevin Owens promo where he hides in Kurt, Kurt Hangel's office. That's just funny. Kevin Owens is such a pro. But Mojo Rally and Noe Jose. This is when the show starts to long. This was a can of soup match. I mean, this this could have been better served, probably as a dark match, something, or or a dark match for the pay per view. This time there was no cheeseburger. Cheeseburgers were deleted by Mojo Rally. Mojo's kind of the brute. I think no way Jose has to go back to his capybara. I think that's how you pronounce it. Kind of roots. That's even though he was the guy, he did he got all the cool copy bear stuff. Again, please comment and say if I'm pronouncing that wrong or right. I know it's the Caribbean fighting style where you do all the flips and feints. I think it's copy bear. I don't think copy bear is some kind of rodent. I don't know. Again, the, my, my my real problem with this match. And it was a can of soup match. I mean, they keep on doing the same thing twice, and it's just not fun. I, mean, I can see rematches, but they've been doing this for four weeks. and uh. yeah, and This was very promo-heavy. If I didn't have stuff to do, like eat, shower, change, clean the house, I did during the commercials. And other stuff. I'm getting I'm getting my live stream stuff set up. So I'm gonna try that out Wednesday again. Join me Wednesday four ten ish, maybe earlier. I'll announce that later in the week. A little quick live stream event. Where you can interact and you can chat, make sure things work. It'd be interesting. Then we had Sasha and Bailey again with a new therapist. I was cooking at this point. Didn't even care. Seth comes out, does a promo with Jinder Mahal. Goes to the ring. Then Dolph. Dolph makes that belt look good. I like I like it when they wear the belt. I like it when they carry on the shoulder. There's only two ways to do that, folks. You're either going to do the traditional way, and that is wear the belt on the waist, should be, or do the Naito way. And just abuse the belt. Kick it around. Trade it for sushi. All that fun stuff. Again, this led this is going to lead to the main event of the night, which is going to be Drew McIntyre versus Seth Rollins. Which was a kind of good match. We'll get to that later. Then we had Broken Matt Hardy versus Fake Bray Wyatt, also known as Bo Dallas. Jeez, Bo looks like Bray every day. I know they're brothers. Bo even got a little chubby, and I don't know if that's just to make him look like Bray a little bit more. But then Matt, during the match, took the shirt off. When the shirt comes off, things get serious. And again, it was a fun match. The move Bo Dallas pulled to the win, I don't know if there's a change in WWE philosophy, but there's a lot of new moves coming out, which is good because I'm tired of like the five moves of death. Or at least the five moves of death that get interrupted. Again, this match, again, it's going to lead up to the extreme rules where you have the leader of worlds of Woken, Matt Hardy, and Bray Wyatt versus the B team of Curtis Axel and Bo Dallas. And again, the lead up was, was good. The highest rank so far. A delicious cheeseburger. And that was good. Then you have Liv Morgan. Next match, you have Liv Morgan versus Ember Moon. Oh, yes, happy birthday. Whoever was there in the crowd saying it's my birthday sign. I do like to wish people happy birthday. Always be positive, folks. We had Liv Morgan in a rematch versus Ember Moon. Uh, I'm going to say it's a can of soup. I mean, I don't know why 
the WWE is kind of boring everyone with all these rematches all the time. I saw this already. Liv Morgan's normal. I mean, I don't get it. Why, why the rematch? I mean, are they so starved for ideas? They have a whole freaking roster full of people. Put them to work. More Kurt Hawkins and Mike Bennett. Miracle Mike Bennett. Yes. But, I mean, Ember Moon is strong as anything. I mean, it was a, it was a jackknife roll-up. It wasn't terrible. Neither soup. Soup's nutritious for you. But, it's a can of soup. Yeah, this was a can, can, can of soup match. I mean, just doing this over and over again. I do wish Ruby right well. I think she has a sprain knee. Which is, it's not fun, but it's not as bad as it could be. Then you had a Finn and Rude promo. And for some reason, the WWE is getting obsessed with abs. That seems weird, because the Good Brothers, at least... Machine Gun Carl Anderson showed off his abs. <laughs> Who cows wanted nothing to do with that? I'm not rude and Finor showing off their abs. Both saying they're good looking. Again, they were going to be victorious! <laughs> and the whole crowd is chanting glorious. He, his body and rude swerved everyone. That was fun. And, and of course, then this even made Renee smile. And then he said, Because we are glorious. It was fun. It kind of swerved. It was good. Then you had, again, this led to the match of Bobby Roode and Finn Balor versus Baron Corbin and Elias. Because everyone wants to walk with Elias. Again, this this was a good match. And here we go. What's this? This is frame bro flame broiled goodness on the grill. It's a cheeseburger match. It was fun. I mean, it really showcased how strong kind of the bruisers Aaron Urban and Elias are versus the more technical abilities. It really was a technical match. I mean, you had double tags. Hot tags. It was pretty good. Um, again, I know there's money to deal with, but just putting in the commercials really kills the action for that home audience. It gave me a time to take a shower at least. But I think one of the things in the commercials is that Smack SmackDown is coming back to the Orlando area August 7th. Hopefully I'll be able to make it there. But they showed pictures of Oscar. I think some of the matches are Asuka versus Carmella, which is kind of weird because Carmella still held the belt. Hmm. We'll see in predictions. What I say? I hope Asuka wins, but I don't know. And then they then they announced a six man main event. I should have brought this down. It was Jeff Hardy. AJ Styles and Daniel Bryan versus Shinsuke Nakamura, Samoa Joe. Who was the third heel? And someone, and I don't think it was Rusev. Maybe, well, maybe it was. Samoa Joe, Shinsuke Nakamura, and someone else. But again, does that mean Samoa Joe's going to get involved? Stay tuned and watch. Then again, he got back to the match. Again, Balor, I mean, great counter-wrestling. That's, that's what he's good at. Rue gets the hot tag. I mean, Barry Corbin has finally learned how to kick out of a roll-up. I thought they actually that at wrestling like 102. Or maybe he was one of He skipped. I don't know. Again, he was, was going to be glorious. But instead, Bobby Roode ate a glorious end of days. 
So again, Corbin in the last one. Again, it was a fun match. It was a cheeseburger match. Braun shows up then in Kurt Angle's office. Kevin Owens looks absolutely terrified. And we're going to have, I think this is our now ninth match at Extreme Rules, where you're going to have Kevin Owens versus Braun Strowman in a steel cage. It should be interesting. It's going to be a long card. I have a funny, bad feeling that this is just going to be one of those blah pay-per-views. Not like the big four or big five. But it's going to be like the way Backlash was. And if that's like that, I'll apologize right now. I'm going to be playing like Candy Crush and Dungeon Brawlers. And you guys will see me play that and, and say, wow, this is a slow match. You no, know, you know it's going to be a long It's going to be a half hour long hour Iron Man match. And th they're slow paced. Uh, I mean, unless it's booked right, Iron Man matches. God, they're long. And you know exactly how long it's going to last. It's going to last half an hour. So I guess I'll take some of the surprise out of it. But, again, this was... this was a, uh, And then this was the main event again. Seth versus Drew McIntyre. I don't know if they have these in Scotland. But this is a cheeseburger. Again, a cheeseburger quality match. It was good. I actually told a good story about how Drew McIntyre is beginning to soften up Seth Rollins to face Dolph Ziggler for their Iron Man match. I mean, again, Seth kind of started off in old school wrestling, technical stuff, which, which I, I truly love. And Drew McIntyre, the very British style, hard hitting. Here's a question for everyone out there in YouTubeville Who delivers the more painful headbutt? Choice one, Samoans. Choice two, the Scots. Because whenever a Scottish person delivers a headbutt, that looks painful. Again, the, the thing with this, I mean, this was a good 20 minute match. They all breathed, but it, I think it just kind of, I'm like, okay, when is this going to be over? And then you look at the clock, 11 o'clock, I'm like, I still have 10 more minutes. So again, it is what it was. Um, Drew just started to toss Seth around. I guess you're, you're that big and Seth is that small compared to him. You knew that. And then Drew McIntyre won, so he's going to be allowed at ringside. Hit the Claymore after some interference by Dolph Ziggler. Dolph did not get qualified though. So that was Monday Night Raw. And, oh, uh, God, it was long. Man, these have to be like two hours, two and a half hours at most. Maybe when I switch from cable to Hulu or Sling TV, free pops for them. Maybe it'll be shorter. I've heard mixed things about Hulu where they cut out some stuff. I don't know. We'll see. Hmm. Well, I'd like to say goodnight to everyone. Again, please like, share, comment, and subscribe. Remember, once we hit 10 for the perfect 10 pizza party, we we'll see the six faces of Tom. And the ladder match is who gets to take on Diamondback Jack Maverick. You get to see the Keller boys fight each other inside Hell of a Cell. See who is the better nephew. And you get to see the pieces of Heather. And thanks everyone for watching. Again, like, share, subscribe. Have a good night. Bye.